Welcome to Ready, Set, Renovate. We're doing a 10-part series on condo living. Remodeling a condo is different than remodeling a house. And we're bringing on guests all across the upstate of South Carolina to tell us about it. Whether you've been in a condo for 20 plus years or you're looking to purchase one, we invite you to join us as we answer your questions. Let's get to it. On this episode of Ready, Set, Renovate, we're talking to Shushanna Highsmith. Shushanna is the lead residential interior designer at Insight Designs. And on this episode, she shares her expertise regarding condo renovations and aesthetics. This is an episode that will attract condo owners and potential condo owners alike. We're glad you're joining us, so let's get to it. Well, Shushanna, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. Tell us just a little bit about yourself, how, how you got into interior design. Mm. And I know we're talking condos, yes. but you have plenty of other I experience. I do, yes, yes. So um, growing up, my parents flipped properties, and so I grew up around construction and just loved it. Um, I've done everything from hang sheetrock to installed toilets and no mild electrical. And interior design just felt like the best path for me to go um, for career-wise. Uh, I went to Anderson University and got an awesome education there and then have been hit the ground running since 2014. We're talking a lot about condos in this episode. Um, in fact, we're doing a 10-part series ah. on condos. Mm -hmm. What What is um, your experience when it comes to condos? Can you? Mm -hmm. So I kind of had a intense trial by fire with condos. Seven years ago, I was thrust into a condo project of eight custom units simultaneously. Wow. So it was a lot and I had never worked with condos before so luckily the contractor was super patient mm. and he just decided instead of us being on the phone all day talking about it I would just be with him. So I literally just followed him around and learned step by step and we just problem solved all day every day. So, so when you get um, people coming to mm -hmm. Insight Designs, mm -hmm. which is where you work, yes. and they're saying I have a condo. Mm -hmm. Is it pr more for the most part going to you to look at? Now, yeah. Do you have that? Yeah, yeah. I've level? done, now I've done probably 12 condo projects since then. So, wow. yeah, I wow. have the most multifamily experience within our firm. I remember coming to visit yeah. your firm and you talking about you were going to like San Francisco yes, or I something. Yes, I do have a project in California right now. That's as well crazy. Too. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, do the condo projects mainly exist around here they or do. are you going all over? Yeah, so that project is a townhome. Uh, I mean, it's almost like a hybrid because San Francisco is so tiny. You could almost qualify it as being a condo. But yeah, mostly condo work is here. Mm -hmm. Greenville's booming for that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's plenty of opportunity there and plenty of people who want to be downtown. Mm -hmm. When it comes to interior design mm -hmm. work versus the work of an interior decorator, mm -hmm. there may be some confusion. Can mm -hmm. you help yeah, clarify that? Yeah, for sure. So I would say an interior designer would have traditionally a four-year degree and just Truthfully, it's structural knowledge. It's mechanical system knowledge. It is learning about how your HVAC system, electrical, plumbing, those things, how they all work together. And we learn school is just an invaluable reference, mm. even now. So I would say a degree, four years, and truthfully, designers can decorate with furniture and things, but decorators don't design. Yes. So I would say a decorator is a great choice if you were doing surfaces like paint, tile, countertops. Um, you want to move a wall that's non-load bearing that doesn't really affect your plumbing or electrical systems, that would be a good choice. But if you're doing a new construction or like a really intense renovation, I'd recommend using a designer just because of having the background knowledge. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. That's really insightful. Yeah. So when a client comes to you with mm -hmm. a condo, they want to remodel mm -hmm. or renovate, mm -hmm. and they're wanting that interior design expertise, mm -hmm. yeah. can you give us a little overview of what that process yes, entails? Yes, absolutely. So first, we would ask for a set of plans immediately uh, so that we can start to understand the project even before we actually sign together. So we can see if they say, you know, we want to make this completely open concept, I have to think about, okay, what all is that going to affect? Who built the condo originally? We try to reach out to them to learn about really? the mechanical so you, system. You actually do some yeah. legwork going way back in time. There's some forensics back in there, yeah. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. Just because structural engineering, 
Um, there might have been lots of condos in Greenville are built by a commercial contractor like Brassfield and Gorey, and then they're finished out with residential contractors. So when you have more people touching projects, you need to learn more about the back end before you can just dive in. So there's more, it's a lot more work on the back than it just is like, let's take down this wall, let's change this, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you say forensics, it's, it's even a lot like the crime forensics where you are trying to piece all this together, right? Yeah, we right? call it like forensic design because there really yeah. is like a lot of research or just spending time digging through things to yeah. try to find those little minute details that can make a big difference. Tell us a little bit about what you may have discovered through that process that will really impact what you can and can't do. Plumbing chases. Ooh. So Yikes. Most that water issues. Water, right? back to water. Yeah. So most of Greenville's condo buildings that I have worked with are post-tension concrete construction. So that means that the floor systems are actually like rebar that are in a cross hatch pattern and that is what whole that's what creates the tension for the concrete to like adhere to. Yeah. So that creates a grid pattern that you cannot disrupt. Mm. So if you have an existing bathroom, there's going to be an existing plumbing chase that is already worked into that system. You can't just necessarily decide you want to take that bathroom out or you want to add a bunch more drains to that bathroom because you could interfere with the post-tension cable and that could like jeopardize the structural integrity of the building. Doing your, your line of work is much more technical than yes. I think the average person absolutely, may realize. Absolutely, absolutely. That you're, you're yeah. actually Most digging. clients say that. Like it's, it's like literally we're like mild contractors yeah. and then there's actually people that physically do the work and oversee the work. Mm -hmm. In that scenario that you just laid out, what could you do? Would you go to the structural engineer, go to the contractor mm -hmm. and say, these yes. are our issues, the yes. client still wants to have this yes. done? And then you x-ray the slab. And they literally bring a piece of machinery that x-rays the concrete and you can see where all the rebar is and you say, okay, if you want to put a shower, you can put your shower right here or you can't have a shower so you kind of it's it's a little bit of sacrificing but it also is protecting the integrity of the yeah. building how cool is that yeah. so it's actually like a x-ray yes that when you go to the doctor mm -hmm. they're looking at your bones it literally is you're, looking through the you're slab. looking at rebar yeah. right yeah that is fascinating yeah. that's a pretty neat yeah. little tidbit mm -hmm. on this um what are things people are wanting to do with their condos? Do you see like a, a trend or any type of mm. thing that's happening over and over? Or is it pretty much client to client? It really is client to client. Uh, doing eight condos simultaneously really taught me like dealing with eight different personalities simultaneously is a different than just having, you know, a client that's building in the mountains versus a client that's at the lake. You can kind of separate those. But when everyone's in the same building, has the same view, and is starting with the same thing, you really have to listen and put those pieces together so that they're getting the space that they want or they need. Is there a, a particular room that you say, let's start here and work out? Or how do you go about mm. deciding where to, where to even start? It's based on how they're going to use the space and who is going to be using the space. So. Mm. Let's say that you are living in Falls Tower and you love the restaurants that are around and you're gonna be eating out five nights a week. You don't need a large kitchen. So we're yeah. gonna talk about that, but you love to have people over for drinks before you go to dinner or they have lots of people go to the Peace Center and then they'll have like after parties. So maybe we take that space from having a huge gourmet kitchen into having a wine bar and an oversized living room. So we start there and then we work backwards into the private areas. So in addition to doing forensics on the building, you're actually working with the client yeah. getting their yeah. way of life mm -hmm. kind of forensics, all, I guess. like mild counseling is also oh, part really? of this. <laughs> That's one joke we often tell. We don't do marriage counseling and, and sometimes you see the tension start yeah, to rise. It's with, real, it's, it really it, is. I wanna get into like the sound issue. Mm -hmm. if, if there are people coming yes. to you with with concerns about the sound because mm -hmm. you're Do in the downtown the city. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so, that one we can touch on pretty quickly. I've only had one instance to where sound was a problem and the client was on the lowest floor of the condo. Granted, it still wasn't ground level, 
but there is a valet stand right near it and it where a bar empties out right there. So at night, mm. on the weekends, it was pretty loud, but during the week, totally quiet. So we ended up doing sound dampening drapery because the walls were glass. Like yeah. it was a complete just glass corner. So we didn't have an option for acoustic panels or something like that. So we reached out to a commercial drapery company and we ended up doing truly soundproofing, like dampening drapery. No way. Mm -hmm. Did it actually work? It really work? helped. Really? Yeah, it really, so really helped. The volume actually mm -hmm. went way yeah. down. Because I ran downstairs and like screamed a couple of times, <laughs> yeah. like, how you can you hear me? And like so, honked the horn and uh, they were like, this is great. We can actually like sleep with this. Because it was like, it was really disruptive. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's actually something to kind of tuck away back there for a condo mm -hmm. owner that that's an option. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware of and that. And you could do it without truly doing full commercially rated drapery. You could go to your local workroom and just say that sound is a concern and they could help you with doing the proper inner lining or choosing a fabric that would help with that sound. So it doesn't look like some weird type of drapery. Correct. It's actually... Correct. It doesn't in. feel like you're in a hotel lobby. Like it feels like you're in a residence. Nice. Mm -hmm. Are a lot of the clients that you work with, is this where they want to live Monday through Friday or is it just their second it's residence? It's secondary. Yeah. yeah. I, from the 12 projects that I've done, I would say that four were primary residences mm -hmm. and all of them were downsizing from, you know, like the Spalding Farms 6,000 square foot house off of Highway 14 down to Greenville. Like everybody wants to be downtown, be in the center of it. And it, that seems to be like a really nice draw, but also people that have larger families or lake properties, they want to have that flexibility to where the grandkids are coming into town. They want to have everybody at the lake and the condo is a little bit more for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have some cool options in downtown mm -hmm. Greenville you too. Do. Like you do. Over the drive mm -hmm. uh, baseball field, mm -hmm. I know is one. Mm -hmm. And uh, and everything is right there within walking yeah. distance. So I guess that's a huge appeal too. Exactly. Like we can just step out our door and exactly. walk. Exactly. How everywhere. important is your patio? Like do yeah. you truly even need, you know, outdoor furniture? Is it more just like a place you just want to enjoy the view from your bedroom if you have a park or, you know, the baseball field or whatever it is that you really want to enjoy? Is it right outside your door? Could you tell us a little bit about current trends mm -hmm. and innovations? The whole thing with the drapery, I mm -hmm. mean, that's new mm -hmm. and, and that's really interesting. Are there any others? Smart homes. I mean, everything is going to a integrated smart home panelized lighting, creating scenes type of situation. Yeah. And when you're doing those, we do need to know on the front end that you're wanting to do that because we have to find a place to house the equipment because these systems have brains. Like there yeah. is like a whole mechanical system that needs to be vented and it needs its own area so that the electrician can run all the home runs back to that rather than it just being like a standard power panel. Yeah, so, so kind of almost like an HVAC unit correct. that you have to tuck away correct. And, yeah. and not make mm -hmm. so obvious. Yeah, so we like to reserve a closet yeah. um, and then make sure we either have like a louvered door or a partially louvered door or that we have We've even done like separate uh, HVAC chases into the rooms to be able to cool them if they can't be ventilated. Um, and that allows you to have automated drapery, music, all your lighting. You can have really anything you want added to that system if you have the setup for it initially. But that's the way things are going because whether you want to walk in from a long day and have your drapery just come down for you yeah. or, you know, have the music set or you, you know, you're going to have guests coming in and you want the temperature to be set just right and the lights to be turned on. You can do all that just from your phone. And you're managing it from your smartphone. Yeah, all from an app. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. What about things in terms of like eco-friendly design? Mm. Is there anything happening on that front in the condo realm? Is that in the condo realm, it's harder because we can't really use reclaimed flooring, which is one of my favorite ways to have a sustainable aspect. Um, mostly due to concrete construction, you do not do a standard hardwood, you do an engineered. So an engineered reclaimed hardwood is gonna be quadruple the price of what just a standard engineered would be. So that's harder. Um, 
but we love reusing clients light fixtures and things like that so I like to think of that as being like an upcycle piece yes rather yeah. than it just being let's just buy new but if you have a you know a light fixture from your previous house or that your grandmother left you or something that you really love let's use that and not only is it a conversation piece but it is you know reusing something yeah mm -hmm. that's being resourceful very yeah. resourceful yeah and sometimes the clients will just bring these to you, say, yeah. like, I want to incorporate these. Yeah. And you're like, we yeah. can do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we, sometimes we base whole rooms around things like that. Yeah. Really, just mm -hmm. single pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Curious to hear how you, you balance functionality, mm -hmm. which is important mm -hmm. in any residence. Absolutely. As well as the aesthetics mm -hmm. of the interior. Mm -hmm. um, is that is there a science to that? Is it mostly yes. art? Or yeah. No, art it, and science? It's an art and a science. Uh, I am definitely more of a function then form type of designer just how I am how I operate as a person so I really like to think about how things are going to work first and then let's see how beautiful we can make them but yeah it's um it's always a balance mostly you know countertop selections how I mean we can choose the most amazing marble in the entire world but if your grandchildren are going to cook with you and you know we don't want pots being dropped on things and cracks so let's think about function out who's going to once again who's using the space hmm. and then that kind of all dominoes back to each other are you seeing a lot of aging in place opportunities within yeah. condo remodels yeah absolutely Where? most of my clients i would say are 55 or older like 90% of them. Mm -hmm. And they're moving into the city for the convenience sake. Yeah, and absolutely. And they, they want to be there. Yep. No, that's, it's that's easy big. for their families to come to them. Um, like the first condo project that I worked on, it was connected to a hotel. Yeah. And so the clients really loved that because their families could come and visit and they didn't have to actually be in their space. They could have their own area at the hotel, but then still like have family dinner and things together. So definitely awesome. an aspect of it. Part of what you do is work with a lot of general contractors, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And and you, there's a lot of back and forth, I'm mm -hmm. sure, yeah, in that absolutely. relationship. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you look for in a contractor mm -hmm. to make it all come together, to make it work. So truly with doing specifically condos, I look for a contractor that has, or help my client like be steered to a contractor that has remodel experience with condos. It is just a different animal than just a standard wood construction freestanding home, whether it's logistics, getting materials up there, whether we, it's, you know, some we have to have a crane to get countertops in or cabinets because not everything has a freight elevator. There's mm -hmm. a lot of logistics in that, but also just having the knowledge of how to work within these spaces because we are relying on you guys to be able to lead us how we need to help guide the client and still maximize the space, make sure it's personalized for them, but not, you know, do something that's going to ruin the structural integrity. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's an interesting thing that you're not just on an island by yourself throwing mm -hmm. out ideas, yeah. that you're connected to a team. Absolutely. And, that's and part of that team is the contractor. I mean, they're pretty much, I would say your contractor is the top of your pyramid is building your team and then you need a great designer and either you need landscape designer if you're doing a freestanding home or if not then it's just a straight line contractor designer to client like it's the most important one question i wanted to ask and and you probably have some ideas on this with a condo you're working with less space mm -hmm. than you would uh, typically less typically, space yes um, mm -hmm. What are some space saving options you might have? Mm. So once again, it goes back to who's going to use the space and how are they going to use it? Do you need that guest bedroom or do you need a study that has a fantastic Murphy bed in it? Do you need more closet space? Okay. What can, can we, you know, take some of that pantry that you were going to have because you're going to be eating out all the time. Mm -hmm. Just really thinking about how within this little rectangle can we move things around and adjust but we're seeing lots of innovations with murphy beds of all things interesting yeah so that's not just some futuristic and it's not crazy like, thing yeah and it's, it's not some weird 1970s like what you've imagined that no, it, it is. plops down exactly well, when i say futuristic i know i've seen them like raise up yes. electronically into the into the ceiling yes yes and we see that a lot with televisions too like you can have a tv that kind of like comes down out of the ceiling that's popular um but yeah I, I'm a big fan of the Murphy beds because it allows you to build when they're done correctly. 
Um, allows you to have cabinetry on either side, sometimes oh, yeah. above. It's a lot of storage, and it just looks like a gorgeous wardrobe. It doesn't have to look like, oh, there's a bed in there. And clients come away happy, like, I really, really yes, like this. absolutely, because it gives them a whole room back, because yeah. they don't always need the bed, but they really need, you know, a desk space, or they need a yoga room. They need, like, separate More spaces. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's someone out there who's seen you and wants yeah. to get in touch with you, yeah. tell us a little bit about how they can go about doing that. Absolutely. Look at our website. It's insightdesigns.com, all one word. And you can read each one of our bios, learn a little bit about us. We all do design a little bit differently and try to have just as much of a personalized approach to our clients finding us and choosing us for what we can do. Design is a very personal thing, so you need to have a connection with the designer before you really jump into it. because. I mean, the projects last for a long time. Oh, yeah. Even even remodels, you know, a remodel can be eight or it could be eighteen months. Yeah. So like, we got to make sure, sure that we're a good team. Yeah. yeah. And one of the cool things that you've articulated that you do is a lot of homework. So much. I mean, yes. you're you're doing a lot of background yeah. study. Yeah. You're doing a lot of forensics. Yeah. Design and that makes happens. A design happens behind the scenes. Like when I'm with a client. We can be talking about ideas and great things can be happening, but design really happens when I take all that information and then get it either drafted or written down or sketches or pulling materials. It really happens behind the scenes and then it's presented rather than it just being like a fully happening in front of your face type of concept, which right. I also think people don't expect. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's been educational for me mm -hmm. that it really does take a lot more legwork than hey, I think this idea or that yeah. idea. You're you're actually coming to it with a whole lot of background. Yeah, absolutely. Whole and lot. it's supposed to help both of us because yeah. I mean, when you're the contractor and I are on the same team. So Absolutely. Yeah. Shushana, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. There has been so much good content shared here, and I would rank it among our very best episodes. Oh, thanks. Really appreciate really you coming appreciate on. That. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Do you own a condo or are interested in remodeling a condo? We at Daniel Builders can help you. Reach out to us at danielbuilders.com. We'd love the opportunity to talk.